Thank you for joining me once again on Crunch Econometrics, still on our panel data series and Stata. Today we shall be looking at how we can use histograms to convey information from the panel data. Remember we have three categorical variables, regions, income groups and inequality categories as you can see on the screen. The outcome variable which is a variable of interest that we'll be analyzing is the Gini coefficient. Before I proceed, I want to apologize to my online audience that I cannot generally attend to all stata questions. Should in case you have any queries regarding stata, commands, or the software itself, you can always assess answers to those queries using any of the options shown on my screen. Please, before you go ahead to watch this video, it is important that you click on the Stata playlist and watch the video I made on how to build panel data in Stata. It is from that video that I showed how you can incorporate categorical variables into your panel data. Please watch that video before you watch this because it is a continuation. So histograms, what are they and what are they not? A histogram is not a bar chart. A histogram shows the underlying distribution of a variable. It gives an accurate representation of the distribution of a numerical data. It gives the estimate of the probability distribution of a variable. It graphically displays data using beans or bars of different heights. It shows frequency distribution of a variable. So you will observe that one thing is common to all these definitions. Distribution, 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 distribution. So a histogram will basically show you how well your variable is distributed among the observations that make up your sample. So that is the simplest understanding you can take away about what a histogram is all about. Here is the data editor and as you can see these are the categorical variables, three of them, and our main variable of interest is the Gini coefficient. We want to see how well the Gini coefficient is well distributed across the observations in this sample and we are also going to restrict the distribution of the Gini coefficient in relation to the regions, income groups and Gini categories. Said in the previous videos I made, you can use categorical variables to show the inherent characteristics in your panel data. As usual, I have the do file ready with all the commands to be executed. Most of these commands were copied from the menu interface and I will show you how to do that. Again, I have my log file on. Please make sure you have your log file on. This will track everything that you are doing and you can always replicate your analysis. The first command I'm going to execute is a xtset command to prepare stata to run every panel data command I'm going to issue. I have executed that command and this is what we have. So we are ready to proceed with all our panel data analysis. I also want to tell you that uh, in Stata, there are two commands that you can use to generate your histogram. It's either you use a histogram command or the two-way histogram command. But most times I use a histogram command because it allows for so much robustness, you can include several specifics in the command, or like the two-way histogram. So this tutorial will focus mainly on the histogram syntax. I will also show you two approaches to constructing a histogram in Stata. The first approach will be using the menu approach. Then the second approach will be using the command approach that I've copied to the do file. So let's start with the menu approach. Then from there we proceed to the do file approach. The first thing we need to show is the distribution of the Gini coefficients across the total observations in the sample. So to do that, we click on graphics, histogram, on that variable, we click Gini. The default is data are continuous, but you can also use this if you have a discrete data. But in my sample here, Gini coefficient is a continuous data. So I check this one. So here you have the beans. The beans are simply the bars. You can choose the number of beans that you want to be in your histogram. You can, cho you can choose the width and even the lower limit of the first bin. All these are subject to changes. So I check this box to highlight it and I reduce 10 to 5. I only want 5 bins. 
I'm going to leave the width of the beans at default and the lower limit of the first bean will be the least value of the Gini coefficient in my sample. So I leave it the way it is. On the y-axis here, the default is density, but I'm going to change this to frequency to show the frequency of the observations in the sample. I'm going to check the add height labels to bars. For the bar label categories, I'm going to specify what I want for the bars. For the size, I want the lettering to be small. The color, I can change it to black. Position, I leave it at default. Every other thing looks fine, I click accept. For the y-axis, I simply type in frequency. For the properties for the title on the y-axis, I select small for size. The color by default is blue, I change it to black. I click accept. For the x-axis, here I just indicate average Gini coefficient. And for the properties, I select small for the characters. And for the color, I choose black. I click accept. For the title of the graph, I simply type in global Gini coefficient because I'm looking at the global sample. So let's take a look at what we've done again. I selected Gini here. I reduced the number of bins from 10 to 5. My data is continuous. I selected frequency to be on the y-axis. I've modified the height labels for the bars. Um, I have the lettering for the title on the y-axis. On the x-axis, I have it. Overall title of the graph is all in there. I click OK. So here you can see the histogram. The numbers at the top of the bars are the various distributions of the Gini coefficient across the sample. These are the observations. These are not the number of countries. So I'm going to copy out this code, which I obtained through the menu interface to the do file, which I will be modifying to generate subsequent commands. So I don't have to be typing all the time. So now I have the code already, as you can see, already modified. Next thing I will show you is how to overlay that frequency distribution with a normal density curve. So to do that, graphics, histogram, everything remains the way they are. I'll click on density plots and select add normal density plots. I click OK. Now you have the uh, histogram now having the normal density curve. So you can easily show so you can easily see whether the distribution is normal or not at a glance. You can also overlay with kernel density if that is your choice. Graphics, histogram. I click on density plots. I uncheck add normal density and I check add kernel density. I don't do any other thing. I click OK. So here we have the distribution of the Gini coefficient across the sample now overlaid with the kernel density plots. Aside the frequency option, you can also indicate whether you want to see the fraction or you want to see the percentage distribution. So all you have to do is just modify frequency here to either fraction or density or percentages. And at the heights of the bars, you will see all the respective figures listed. Next thing I'm going to show you by modifying the command I copied from Stata is to show the distribution of Gini coefficients by those categorical variables. Remember, we have three categorical variables. We have region, Gini category, and we have income groups. So in this command, you can see on the screen, I have indicated by region. That is, I want to see the distribution of the Gini coefficients on a regional basis. So I've highlighted this, and let's run it. Yeah, you can see the graph. Yes, it looks clumsy because we have several regions. But you can see it gives you an idea that you can actually get a distribution of your uh, outcome variable on a regional basis, that is, on a categorical variable basis. So we have seven categories here, and you can see the, you can see the distribution of the Gini coefficients across the seven regions. So this is just to give you an idea of how your variable of interest can be shown across your categorical variables. Do the same thing for other categorical variables in your model. So lastly, I'm going to show you how you can restrict the distribution of your outcome variable within a subcategory. 
One of my subcategories is Europe and Asia Pacific subcategory. So I want to see uh, the distribution of the Gini coefficients within the observations restricted to this subcategory. I have the command here, which I've already modified. It has the if EAP here. This is the command histogram Gini if EAP. So the if option has restricted whatever analysis I'm going to perform strictly on the EAP region. So all I need to do is to highlight and run it. So now we can see that within the EAP region, we have seen the distribution of the Gini coefficients within that region. So this one says a lot about what can be going on within your sub-categorical variable. The next command I've modified is to show it by income groups. That is the distribution of countries in the EAP region according to their income groups. Remember we have four income groups. So we can see that within the EAP region, the countries that fall in these income groups, you can see the distribution of the observations. So a lot of information can be gathered from this plot. Last but not the least is to show distribution by Gini category relative to EAP region. I'm going to run this command. So you can see here that within the EAP region, observations spread across very low inequalities to very high inequalities. You can see the numbers at the top of the bars. So if I'm going to say anything about this region, this graph tells me a lot about the distribution of the observations within that category. So using histograms depicts the inherent characteristics in your data. As always, thank you for watching. Kindly support my channel for 1,000 subscribers. Please share my videos to your cohorts and your friends on social media and other platforms. This channel is dedicated to beginners and intermediate users. Please stay with me. Don't go away. I'll be right back.